What's going on guys? Welcome back once again. We got a new week rolling in and we have to have a look at a lot of things guys. So in this video, we're going to be diving deep into the open interest coming from the Bitcoin futures options and the price action on BTC, Ethereum and Solana. This one looking like a complete bull tart guys. So we got a lot of things to talk about. Let's kick off this video right here. Starting off with the option open interest. We are taking a look at the previous all time I take down in terms of the volume which is pumping into the option market guys. This means that crazy amount of bets are being put into the market for Bitcoin. I don't know, maybe crossing 100,000 to 200,000 or something like that. Most of the calls are essentially out of the money. Now, a lot of people are expecting Bitcoin to either go to 100,000, 200,000 or maybe down below bag into $10,000 levels, right? So there's not a lot of in the money call options, open interest as of now, which is why we have started looking at the sentiment, guys. Now, this sentiment tells us that the environment is getting speculative. So a lot of people will start pumping into... I don't know guys, maybe a lot of crypto assets will start picking up out of nowhere because we are back into another round of, let's just say, speculation as a whole as the entire crypto market just goes to the upside in a rip. Now, the only thing which is convincing me of this thing is the, the, op the, sorry, the BTC futures open interest, guys. Now, if we take a look at what happened literally one year ago, it was something like this in terms of the open interest signature, guys. You saw how Bitcoin kind of topped out in the midterm from 15,000, went down back all the way towards 10,000. And then you had this little scoop up in the open interest simply going all the way towards the upside where most of the positions were piling on top of each other. A lot of people were simply jumping into long exposure, guys. And well, that led into this, right? Now, this is open interest, guys. This is the amount of people interested in taking long or short position on Bitcoin itself. This is a metric that is going to tell you that is the market completely exuberant or is the market fearful or is the market, I don't know, speculating on some crazy levels. This is what this data is going to tell you. Now, the only thing which is happening right here, right now is that we are looking at similar signature, guys. We're looking at a similar signature, right? Now, this kind of reaccumulation spanned over for a little longer than what we saw back in October um, 2020 itself. But it looks to me like similar things are brewing up again. We are kind of leaving the previous all-time high. Essentially, the open interest really wants to leave the previous all-time high, guys. Now, this signature was set in when Bitcoin was trying to put in $65,000, $66,000 stop in the small to mid time frames. That is when it happened. Are we recording? Yep, we are doing that. Yep. So what we're doing is we're kind of going beyond this one telling us this is telling us that maybe the sentiment, the overall speculation in the space is certainly going to get into a multifold environment once again, guys, once again, because 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 this is what this is what we saw right here, guys. This is exactly what we saw right here. You saw you saw a little consolidation going on and then you simply rip to the upside with this kind of signature. You might have your potential upside targets all the way towards 300,000 guys. Now, all of these things and all of these biases analysis, they remain valid until Bitcoin at first is holding 50,000 and then is holding 40,000 guys. It's as clear as it gets, right? Okay. Now with that said, we're going to be jumping into the price action itself on the weekly time frame. Now this weekly candle was a little indecision guys, not really what I want to see for an immediate trend continuation to the upside. So what can we expect for the rest of the week? Now guys, what I was speculating on was the fact that maybe we could close this candle a little bit green, right? Now just towards the end of this weekly close itself, I was expecting this candle to simply just simply just Put in that green candle above the upper Bollinger Band. But it did not happen, which means that maybe, guys, the first and the foremost interpretation out of this price action could be the fact that Bitcoin could still be in a range bound situation. Unfortunately, unfortunately, for maybe the start of this week, at least for the start of this week, we would not be looking at exponential moves on Bitcoin itself all the way towards 75, 85,000, guys. Now, for those things to happen, now, I'm not saying that that will not happen at all. For those things to happen, you have to have crazy conditions in the small time frames to brew up for you, right? The first and the foremost being, well, if you're getting supported from the middle Bollinger Band, you have higher chances to take out the upper side of Bollinger Band, guys. Now, remember, the small time frames will extrapolate themselves into the bigger time frames, right? Now, if you see Bitcoin kind of trending alongside the upper Bollinger Band, well, it doesn't have to be exactly above the upper Bollinger Band in terms of opening and the closing basis. But if you are trending with the upper Bollinger Band, that should reflect on the weekly itself, guys. Now, if you have this kind of price action behavior, which was simply sticking to the upper Bollinger Band, this was simply reflected on the weekly itself, guys. As you can see, the daily was rolling with the upper side. So the weekly was also kind of closing 
above the upper Bollinger Band. Now, the daily candle kind of deviated from the upper side Bollinger Band and closed in the lower ranges right here at the $60,000 flat zones, which is why, which is why maybe the start of this week could look something like this, guys. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys right here. This, this could look something like this, right? It could be something like this. Could gradually shift your, let's just say, lows to a little higher end again and again but this is something which you would expect kind of like a volatile behavior coming in on bitcoin itself guys now the only thing which is making me convicted of this fact right here is that or right, now there are two things guys first of all you got the support right here this is the point of control guys this is this is the point where i was putting a lot of weight into a lot of lot of freaking weight into right now this one is being held as of now and we do want to see weekly candles being supported above fifty-eight thousand dollars for good because that is going to be your ultimate point of control guys now if i take a look at the vpvr itself with the bollinger band let's see if we have any volume confluence going on yep yep guys you can see right here this level is kind of confirmed as a support so if you see bitcoin kind of closing three-day candles or two-day candles below this entire liquid zone right here that should ring some red bells guys that could potentially start a new trend maybe to test the slower side of the trend line right here sitting in at 49 fifty thousand dollars guys again back again it's it's pretty much <laughs> Our situation right here is pretty much in rounded figures, guys. You got your massive support at forty thousand dollars, and then you got your interim kind of volume node support as well at fifty thousand. And currently, for the time being, you are holding on to sixty thousand dollars. So, if the trend really has to revert to the downside, it has to first take out sixty thousand, and then it has to take fifty thousand, and then finally forty thousand, guys. But I do believe that if we go below fifty thousand once again, that could mean that maybe we could be looking at a bigger form of consolidation right here, right? That could mean that we could extend our price action range right here between, let's just assume forty thousand and seventy thousand to the upside for a very long time, right? For a very long time, that could potentially happen as well. But am I expecting that? Nope, I'm not going to be expecting this guys. I'm simply going to be expecting Bitcoin simply go to the upside and one single fucking green candle Which is going to be simply unstoppable which is going to be liquidating every bear out of the market and which is going to be making everybody rich, right? <laughs> Look guys, this is the only th the only thing about this price action At least telling us that maybe we could go through a supply shock is the fact that you don't you literally don't have any Bitcoin in supply guys these things are quite like these things are quite obvious right if you if you go ahead if you do your own homework if you find out how much Bitcoin is truly in supply you will know the deal you will certainly know the deal guys the only thing which can cause a humongous sell pressure is maybe some investors shaking out from crypto market right so it can be a cascading sell side effect guys but as the macro picture I don't see anything bearish right here. I just do not. I'm unable to see anything bearish, guys. I'm unable to pinpoint any bearish stuff right here in the Bitcoin price action itself, which is why if any sell side cascading, uh, cascading effect starts to take place, most likely it's going to be an external factor, guys. Most likely it's going to be some institution rolling out uh, with their BTC stash or maybe selling out something. I don't know, guys. Something like that could trigger that down move, but I don't see. For the time being, there's nothing. There's quite literally nothing which can kill the momentum as of now, right? So that's going to give me a lot of confidence in terms of my long exposure in the market as well now okay guys one more cheat code that we can talk about right here. i think you did this one right? I, I get, get confused between 350 dma and the 111 ema itself so you can see right here let me get rid of the bollinger band once again this blue moving average projection is certainly one of the 350 moving average fibonacci extension right this one is not your ordinary moving average guys these purple blue red magenta and green lines these lines are not your ordinary fucking moving averages these are your projections on top of 350 and 111 simple moving average right and all of these moving averages are projected in a fibonacci sequence well, 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 Fibonacci and all of these golden ratios can your edge can be your edge in the market as well, guys. It's it's as simple as it can get, right? Now, what we're looking at back again, back again, everything pointing out towards one single fact that we could be looking at October 2020 happening once again, guys, happening once again, right? Everything is telling us that. Now, the Fibonacci extension is telling us that maybe this breakout is for real, right? It's I, I still use the word maybe because anything can happen in the market, guys. Nobody is going to be 100% sure shot of any fact for that matter, right? So maybe this could be a real pierce through situation that we are dealing with and maybe Bitcoin can roll all the way towards the 
magenta purple line right here or maybe it could go all the way to magenta purple line holy shit that's kind of like delhi metro <laughs> all right but essentially this is what your upside target could look like right 120 100 130000 per bitcoin maybe and honestly, guys, this is not a fucking far-fetched opinion for you right here. This is just another 100% move to the upside right here. We have good opportunity in the market. Now, remember, if Bitcoin is going to go for that 100% move to the upside, potentially your good-looking altcoins, good-looking projects in the market will do 1,000x, 100 guys. When Bitcoin did this, I don't know, something like, something like Phantom did a 10x right axie infinity did almost a 50x in the market guys solana is more than 200x in the market holy shit bitcoin does this most of the altcoins with good projects coming to driven and a lot of let's just say projects which have a lot of backing to them are most likely going to do good guys are most likely going to do good in the market right most of the structures will be dependent on how bitcoin is behaving in the market for me personally i'm going to be managing i'm going to be strictly managing most of the risks below this price point right here as if we lose this yellow projection of moving average most likely we will come back down and roll all the way towards the 350 moving average itself guys both of these moving averages are fibonacci moving averages 111 350 right now I don't mean to tell you that put this indicator right up your charts right here look guys essentially just don't clog your charts a lot right you can have a crazy amount of indicators you can conclude with one single thing coming from eight different indicators if that is happening for you maybe it's going to work out where whereas a lot of people a lot of people who are trying to learn ta in the market they fuck up this step right here guys a lot of people will simply put in crazy amount of indicators most of the people or, or, or let me just demonstrate how a rookie chart is gonna look like to you guys let me just put in fucking everything right here on my fucking indicator list and this is what a fucking rookie chart looks like man this, I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie guys a lot of people will be thinking that i'm a fucking genius i have every single data in front of me right here so i'm gonna be a fucking millionaire overnight because of all of these indicators but this is exactly what a rookie chart what a noob chart would look like guys now am i trying to pinpoint that you are a new or you are doing this wrong you are doing that. look guys you can interpret the market in one million different ways altogether but what i have personally found out to be true is the fact that the more indicators you have in your chart the more chances that you're going to be fucking up your trade for good this is what happens again and again guys holy shit so what you can do is maybe you can bifurcate different moving averages or different indicators as one single group and maybe what you can do is you can conclude with one single indicator at a time guys for example if we talk about the guppy right here the guppy is telling us that the trend is under a swing continuation move to the upside with the bottom side support coming in at fifty thousand dollars we just confirmed fifty thousand dollars in terms of let's just say moving averages as well guys now the guppy tells us that what we can do is we can jump on straight into golden golden ratio in terms of fibonacci analysis itself and then we can see that the first red bell is right here so if we lose this one most likely we'll teleport down all the way towards fifty two thousand dollars in one single candle most likely right and now Another thing, guys, if we just take away everything right here, we can jump into the Bollinger Band and then we can talk about the daily Bollinger Band to the upside, which is giving us resistance, right? So this is how you bifurcate, guys. This is how you try to, let's just say, formulate, stabilize your own data, anal uh, data analysis, data mining for that matter, coming from the charts itself. This is how you proceed with... I simply, I simply zoned out right here. I can't recall, I can't recall the word, guys. All right, basically this is your organization skills, right? Do this, do this guys, fucking do this. You wanna come out profitable in the market. The first and the foremost thing you have to do is be a good money manager guys, be a good money manager and be a good organizer of general things in life, right? The more organized you are, the more things will reflect on your trading as a whole, guys. This is my belief. Things might work completely different from, for certain people. Look, I've seen traders living in a complete mess with garbage everywhere, with fucking cigarettes everywhere. And I don't know, guys, at the end of the day, they are the ones to take 10 BTC worth of hit in the market, right? They are the ones who just, who would make, guys, I've seen people making 100 BTC in one single trade and then fucking losing it in the next goddamn trade itself, right? organization skills money management skills you can be you can make you can go ahead for that best trade in the life right you can simply you can simply nail i don't know guys a ten thousand person move to the upside but the only thing which is going to keep that profits 
is your organization skills is your risk management is your stop losses is your money management as a whole right because you might know this feeling as well you might sometimes hit that jackpot and you might just go for 500% gains 600% gains on leverage but when time comes you would often find yourself giving those gains back away to the market correct me if i'm wrong guys just correct me if i'm wrong i'm going to be telling all of these things right up to your face because <laughs> well 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 it took me a crazy amount of time to get away and get rid of all of these things guys essentially it just took me a lot of time to simplify the process itself right now if you think that you are better than the process itself things are not going to look nice for you things will always be bleak for you guys which is why which is why a lot of great people tell you a lot of a lot of let's just say big analysts will always tell you that risk management is going to keep that profit all those risk assessors and all of those analysts are not bears they are not bears guys right let's say they have a very structured and a very controlled way of making money in the market whether it's going to be bull cycle or a bear cycle these people and these analysts or these systematic traders will certainly survive and thrive and constantly make money guys and run their houses and all of these things right okay okay all right all right all right now i think that's enough about bitcoin itself and a lot of pep talks also for you guys right here which is why guys you know the deal right here. just to conclude this one right here we got a support looking in at $59,000 flat you don't want to see a daily closing below this one right here because if that happens maybe we'll come back down all the way towards the lower side of $50,000 levels and until then most likely for the rest of the day we could be climbing we could be creeping and climbing all the way towards $65,000 for yet another retest of the strange high right here guys although what do we see in the momentum we see that the RSI is kind of picking up right here the TSI is kind of looking weak but we can pull through guys we can pull through one single bullish candle this momentum oscillator will completely reset right now the only range the only price level which I'll be putting a lot of focus into is going to be $58,500 flat this is going to be a 4 hour opening and a closing zone where most most of the decisions are going to be based guys at least in the mid to small time frames so what's for bitcoin holding this level if this one is not able to hold the price action most likely this is your target guys and ultimately you could be you could be coming back and you could be testing the lower side of this trend line as well which is well back again at 52,000 50,000 dollar ranges right so with that said let's jump on to ethereum real quick guys ethereum on the weekly is looking very nice and most certainly guys this is something which i've been talking about again and again this is one of the most beautiful looking cup and handle i've ever seen in my life guys i've charted for at least four to five years man holy shit but this is amazing this is this 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 is a good looking technical pattern right here which is why guys i'm not going to be stressing out a lot if i'm investing on ethereum because most of my risk management is going to be below 2700 dollars now that means that if i'm going long and strong on ethereum i'm not look guys essentially i'm not going to be concerned until this price point right here but you guys are going to simply puke that how can how can crypto get has such amount of such amount of stop loss right here guys this is how i manage my money in life right so that i won't give a fuck about the let's just say about my position even if the asset goes down below by 60 percent number one because i'm not on leverage i'm simply not on leverage in the market guys i'm simply flipping my spot exposure and sometimes i'm just exposing my equity into futures market with, let's just say 0.5 percent of my margin guys this this is why even if the price action goes all the way towards these levels it's all right because 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 behold guys behold for this target right this is what we are looking at this is what we're looking at most likely this is what we're looking at man holy shit now okay now why do i say this guys because fractal squirrel flat is squirrel we're going to be talking about fractalizing stuff right here Ethereum topped out at 4236 coming from this consolidation out of the first expansion that came from this entire reaccumulation phase. Now, if you consider this entire zone as a potential reaccumulation phase, you can see guys that this Ethereum's price action is once again getting reaccumulated above the previous all time high and is wanting to continue the trend to the upside with the Bollinger Bands in completely fine, which would give our target all the way towards the $10,000 evaluation on Ethereum itself, guys. Now, with most of the Ethereum getting locked out here and there and this and that, this asset is also potentially a supply shock, man. Holy shit. Now, this is quite expensive. ETH, DeFi, ETH, NFT is always going to be expensive to use, guys. This is, this is a complete no-brainer, which is why the crazy exponential returns 
well 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 most likely solana avax and harmony and all of these alternative blockchains with ethereum are going to give you better gains than ethereum itself guys is this a financial advice nope this is not a financial advice but let me tell you one thing guys the big money the big money is not playing the wrecked game the big money is not playing the altcoin wrecked game guys if the big money if the capitalists are in here to capitalize most likely they stick around with ethereum and bitcoin guys i do not think that you want to be jumping into any altcoin with a billion dollars in liquidity in your hand in one single day i don't think it's going to be a viable choice for any investor or for any venture capitalist right so ethereum and bitcoin is going to be the major play from for most of the institutions and well for me as well guys because for me personally i'm going to be towards the safer end of things i simply want to stick to my system and let my system do its own thing now in the meantime if let's just say i, I for example if i was speculating on loopring right for example if i was speculating on lrc yes my emotions will tell me that <laughs> get that bag back into your portfolio buy lrc once again just do it just do it how did you sell why did you sell but my system if my system is going to tell me that my margin management is not on par my exposure is beyond my comprehension my futures exposure is completely fine if my system is telling me that i am completely exposed in the market in terms of my comfort zone i'm not going to supersede that i'm not going to be questioning my system as a whole i will stick to it guys i will simply stick to it right because look this is one single cycle guys this is one single cycle that we are talking about on ethereum right here and we got i don't know guys 12000 fucking crypto assets right and then we have crazy amount of bull and bear cycles guys boom and bust happening right now only 5 to 6% of the entire population is holding on to crypto assets as a whole we could be talking about these boom and bust cycles all the way towards 49.99% adoption guys that is when maybe i plan about taking a complete exit from crypto assets as a whole 49 to 50 percent adoption that is where i plan my exit strategies guys my exit strategies are not at 100000 dollars nope a lot of youtubers are talking about who i'm going to sell bitcoin at 100000 dollars they might be geniuses man holy shit that could potentially be a market top as well right but for my time horizon and my own trading right here i don't think i'm going to be selling 100000 guys I feel that that is where the real party might just begin. Maybe that could happen guys. Beyond 100,000, that is where the real extension of the towards 300,000 could happen and everybody will be caught off guard man. Holy shit. Most likely most likely the the only ones to make that make the real use of that 100 that gains to the upside. It's going to be pretty less amount of people, right? And guess what guys, new people. All right, there's one more thing which I have to talk about before jumping to Solana right here. What is happening in the market is that a lot of new people have started learning TA and a lot of new people have started let's just say learning how to short crypto assets in the market guys oh my goodness what a disaster what a fucking disaster man nobody in their right brains are going to be shorting bitcoin here man shit let me be very frank about that because if a lot of people do understand the supply demand mechanics in the market they are not going to be acting like fucking noobs and shorting bitcoin all the way towards the upside man shit <sighs> this is what happened here guys this is what happened here all throughout this wave to the upside guys all throughout let's just say readers of the $20000 levels everybody was shorting the fuck out of bitcoin wanting the price action to revert and this was your informed money in the market man this was your informed money trying to short bitcoin right and this is where the informed money left <laughs> all that bearish bias now what is happening here is that bitcoin gave a lot of people or a lot of time <laughs> essentially essentially bitcoin went for this entire sideways behavior for let's just say guys most part of the year right 9 months bitcoin was in the sidelines it was completely doing this range on behavior as a whole this is where a lot of smart people started learning about ta and started learning about shorting crypto assets as a whole yes a lot of people started profiting coming from short exposure in the market as well now what will happen is that all the people who stick to biases right now this is also a feeling guys this is also a feeling this is also a sentiment that you can relate a lot of people will simply stick to one single strategy without sharpening it without doing anything so if essentially if you make money shorting bitcoin right if you make crazy gains shorting bitcoin most likely you will repeat that process until you lose it all in the market <laughs> Man oh man this completely reminds me of what I was doing right here shit 
Holy shit, guys. Holy shit. And these short squeezes, even these short squeezes were completely range bound for Bitcoin itself. But I was not able to look at the bigger picture, guys. I was just not. I was simply squeezing the small time frames and I was shorting, man. I was shorting all throughout these squeezes to the upside, not realizing that maybe the short positions I'm squeezing in the market, I'm stacking up for myself is going to be very, very crazy. Look, guys, ultimately, these price action did come down. But this... Things like these can happen, guys. Things like so, which is why just don't be one single side, right? Just, just just don't pick one side. Just don't be a bull or don't be a bear, guys. Just flow like water. If this one is going to the upside, simply long it, right? And if this one is going to the downside, simply sell it. Okay, last analysis for the day before I wind this video. This is out of control. All right, Solana is completely out of control, man. Shit. Solana on the weekly time frame is. I don't know what the fuck can stop this one, but man, oh man, guys, if I just simply took, if I just simply take off the logarithmic charts right here, the arithmetic charts are telling us that maybe this reaccumulation is over once again, and we could be squeezing real high, man, once again, at least towards 350, 400. And then we could come back for a nasty correction to the downside, guys. But what is brewing up right here in the price action is that good things could happen for Solana, right? This is a price action which, man, oh man, I've seen it happen again and again in the market, guys. Look at this bull flag right here. This is good looking bull flag. This is a very beautiful looking bull flag, to be honest with you, on the weekly time frame itself. So pff, you can expect crazy things coming from Solana in terms of a continuous leg to the upside, guys. Did we take out the previous all-time high, although we did not wake above the previous all-time high, which is at $216. Now, if you take a look at the RSI, I do believe, yep, the RSI is completely fine, guys. The TSI is simply sliding above. This is fine on the weekly, guys. Sol USD on the weekly is completely fine. So if you talk about the logarithmic charts right here, do we have anything which can tell us the tops and the bottoms? Well, if the patterns have to repeat, well, patterns, this is why you call them patterns, right? Patterns, repetitions, patterns. I don't know. So I should probably not use the word repeat with patterns, I guess. So if the patterns are shaping out like this again and again, maybe we could, we, maybe we can talk about similar things happening from this little squeeze as well down here. So the first squeeze had the resolution coming in at 10764. The second squeeze halted at 4236. Now the third squeeze could maybe top out at 261 at first and maybe go all the way towards 4236 as well guys once again, right? But if you are looking at a massive, massive trend continuation, maybe the 10764 could also come into fruition guys. 10764 is at $700. Now, am I expecting that thing to happen? Nope. If Solana goes to $700, what am I going to do? Guys, I'm going to be in a complete disbelief, right? And guess what? Most likely I will sell it. Most likely I will sell it, guys. Let me be very frank and honest, right? If this happens, most likely. So is this a financial advice? This is not a financial advice. Even if it goes all the way towards the upside, am I telling you guys to long Solana right here? Nope. Nope, nope, and nope. Manage your risk, guys. Manage your risk. I do not know for sure. I just don't know f what is going to happen for sure, which is why most part of my risk management is going to be below this entire zone, which is going to be your $170, guys. I remember when I posted the last video on Solana itself, we were kind of targeting $180 regions, guys. We were targeting this entire zone right here. This one happened like this. Well, as soon as the squeeze resolved to the upside, I mean, essentially, we just... You teleported all the way towards $180 without a hiccup, without any hiccup, without any major hiccup, right? And now what is happening is that you're printing in higher lows. So even if it come back, comes back down all the way towards this level, most likely it'll set, set in another higher low and continue its trend to the upside. So most of the risk management on the Solana is going to be below $180 until you're above this price point right here, most likely you'll roll all the way towards 360, guys. This could happen very, very soon. This could happen very, very soon for Solana itself, right? Okay. I'm going to be winding up this video right here. If you found out value, hit that like, bell, subscribe. I did not ask for like, man. Holy shit. <laughs> Not gonna have engagement for this video once again back again another time. But anyways guys, I will catch all of you in the next video Most likely tomorrow itself. Bye for now